All right, well, you guys get some bonus time on how to complete the square. I'm going to show you a slightly different technique on how to do this uh, than I've showed in the videos or that I've showed in class. Um, this is going to going to kind of help you see how to factor a perfect square trinomial very easily from our, our third step on when you find the square of half of our x coefficient. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's, we have three examples up here. I'll start with the first one on the far left. When you look at this, we realize that the first two steps are, are not really completed yet. We have to do the first step, which is to get that three on the other side. We're going to add that to both sides. So I'll get y squared plus 4y equals 3. I'm leaving myself a little extra space there. That way I know I'm going to add the square of half the middle term. Now here's what I was talking about in class for those of you who were there, and if you weren't there, this is something new for you. What we're going to do is we're going to do two steps basically as one. So we're looking at the, the x coefficient. That would be the positive 4. What we do is we take half of that. Half of 4 is 2. So right now, before you actually complete the square, you can go ahead to your next step and complete the factoring as you're doing it. So when I do that half of 4 equals 2 thing, this is what it means. I think, okay, I'm taking the x coefficient, that's 4, divided in half, that's going to give you 2. I know automatically that my very next step is going to be factored as y plus 2. y plus 2? Well, Half of this is positive 2. I know that's going to be a y. That is going to give me the 2, and then I know for certain it's going to be squared. I know that because we're going to be creating that perfect square trinomial, and those always factor as y plus or minus half the middle term squared. So now we can go back to our first step. So we're basically doing two steps as one. So we're taking half of this, that goes there. Now square that number, you're always going to get a positive. Any number squared is positive. I'm going to put that here and there. It's got to go on both sides because we have an equation. What you do to one side, you have to do the other, otherwise it will be unbalanced. So again, here's our steps. Add the 3. Take half of this number, write it in your next step right now. Don't go any further. Write it in your next step right now as y plus or minus, depending on whether this is positive or negative, y in this case plus 2 squared, and then we square that number and we add that to both sides. From here, you're home free. You're going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus and minus. Subtract 2, and you're done. You should write those answers out explicitly as two different solutions. Let's try that in a couple more examples just to really get a feel of this. Uh, you'll see this in this one. This is a little bit more difficult because we don't have an even x coefficient, and it's negative, so I wanted you to see that as well. So our first step, of course, is subtract 2. We're going to do that. Now, we've got to look at the x coefficient, which in this case is negative 5. How you take half of any number is you divide it by 2. Now, of course, you can't really divide by 5 by 2 and get a whole number, so we're going to leave it not as 2 and a half, not as 2.5, as negative 5 over 2. So this is where our next step comes in. So right here, you're thinking, okay, I know I need to take half of this. I know I'm okay because my coefficient out here is 1. That's great. That's what we want to have happen. But the very next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take my x minus, because I have a negative, and I'm going to take half of this number. That's 5 over 2. And I know it's going to be squared. Now, as soon as we do that, well, we're going to take that negative 5 halves, we're going to square it. If we square negative 5 halves, you are going to get a positive, which means we have to add it. Squaring the 5 gives you 25. Squaring the 2 gives you 4. So we're going to add 
25 over 4, not just to one side, but to both sides. Sorry, I forgot the negative there. As soon as we do that, this part would be very hard to factor if you just looked at it. If you look at that and go x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4, how am I going to factor that? Well, you don't have to worry about it because we know for certain that's a perfect square trinomial. We just created it. So if you've just created it, you already know how it's going to factor. That's why we do these two steps at once. We do this one, we say, okay, we'll just take half that number, put it right there. Square it, you got it. That is the factorization, so you don't have to really think on how you would factor it. We've already done it. We're, we're kind of like working backwards here. Then we're going to do this side. Yeah, it's fractions. Use your calculator. Do whatever you want. This is going to be 17 over 4. And after that, again, we're pretty much home free. We're going to take a square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus and minus. The 2 comes from the square root of 4, add 5 halves, since we have a common denominator we can make one fraction out of that. And there's your two solutions, of course again you'd write them out explicitly. Okay, the next one quite a bit harder. The reason is, not only do we have a negative in the middle uh, as our x coefficient, it is also odd, and we have to divide by 2. So here's the process for doing this, this problem. First, of course, we've got to get rid of that 7. All constants must be on the other side. The next thing you do, this completing the square process only works if your x squared coefficient is 1. So basically you don't have another, another number besides 1 out there. If you do, you have to divide. So here we're going to divide every single term by 2. That gets rid of that coefficient. left myself a little extra space because I know I'm going to add something there. Now, here's where this really helps you on the next step. The next step would be take half of this, coefi of this coefficient of x, that's negative 5 halves. How you take half of a fraction, just multiply the denominator by 2. That cuts it in half. Think about it. 1 half times any fraction. 1 times a numerator is a numerator. 2 times a denominator is 2 times a denominator. So half of this fraction will complete the square, that's x, this will be a minus, is 5 over, not 2, but 4, just 2 times 2. Now we can square negative 5 fourths, so we've taken half of it, now we square it and add it to both sides. This squared is 25 over 16. At this point, this is all this is what I'm going to do for you. At this point, you have something squared that's great. Combine these fractions, you'll get a fraction, and you'll be right here this step. Then you'll take a square root of it, then you'll add 5 fourths to both sides and see what you get out of that thing. And that's that would be the final step on this, this problem. So here, just making it down to here is the tough part. After this, you have basically the same idea. Now I would like to show you also how this helps you in creating the equation for the quadratic formula. So let's look at this and we're going to do the proof right, right now. So we'll be using the same exact idea of completing the square, only now we're going to do it on a general quadratic equ uh, equation. So what did we do before? Get rid of the c, the constant. So we'll subtract that. Now 
Then we got rid of any coefficient in front of x squared. That's the a. We'll divide. If you divide by a, you get b over ax and negative c over a. We've divided every term by a. That's here, that's here, and that's there. Now, here's where that second, that, that special step that I showed you about really comes in handy. We know that this is going to be able to factor as something squared as long as we complete the square. So here's how we did it. We look at our middle term. That's the x term. Take the coefficient b over a. Well, what's half of b over a? b over 2a. Remember, multiply the denominator by 2. Here's b over a. Here's half of that. Now when we square it, We get b over 2a squared. Let's not be fancy about it. Let's just put square and b over 2a squared. This looks ridiculous to factor if you're not used to factoring. So it, it, if you look at that, it's going to be hard. Using that special step that we do, do it at the same time, it's very easy to factor. This is this. On the right-hand side, we'll do some fancy math. We'll do negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. We'll find a common denominator. We'll make one fraction out of that now that we do have a common denominator. We'll take a square root of both sides. I'm going to take the square root of the top and leave it. The square root of the denominator, square root of 4 is 2, square root of a squared is a, and there's only two more steps. We're going to as subtract this fraction on both sides. What we're going to end up with is that. Notice that we have a common denominator. That means just like in the previous problems, we can put this together as one fraction. And that right there is a quadratic formula as done by completing the square. Hopefully that helps you, especially this step right here. That should really help. Uh, make sure you're doing both those equations at the same time. That will make it so you don't really worry about the factoring. It's built into the problem for you.